Hi guys, it's Emily. Welcome back to my channel. Sorry if you hear squeaking noises. My dog just ripped open a squeak toy and she's playing with the squeaker now. Um, but May is Mental Health Awareness Month. So if you couldn't tell by the title or anything else from this video, I am going to speak about my mental health journey diagnosis to bipolar disorder and speak about the time that I went to the hospital for said issues back in January. Um, I was diagnosed January 23rd, 2019 to be exact. So, yeah. Um, but basically, I don't want to trigger anyone, so trigger warning for hospitals, mental health, all that stuff. So, thank you so much for watching. Please consider hitting that red subscribe button. We are one person away from 340 subscribers. It would mean the world to me if you guys subscribed and did all the things. Watched all my videos. Binged watched everything. And, uh, yeah. So, let's get right on into the video. Hi, guys. Emily here. And I wish this title was fake. I wish this title didn't need to happen and I wish this title was like a complete not truth um but it is the truth and it is my truth and this is going to be the time that I was brought to the psychiatric mental hospital um and discussing new diagnoses that I have um now I've always been really trying to be transparent with all of you and I have tried to do that, but this happened back in January and it's just taken me until now to be able to speak the diagnoses out loud. After a couple months of therapy, I'm still in therapy weekly. I actually go this Thursday. And I just wanted to make this video not for views, not for anything, but mostly just for me to be able to remember, but also for me to be able to help someone who is scared to go to the hospital to get help, who is scared to reach out and tell their doctor or their friend or their mom or their dad or whoever how they're feeling. Um, let me give you a little bit of a backstory. I have always had mental illness. Um, Ever since I was probably five years old, I was diagnosed with anxiety. And then at age 12, I was diagnosed with clinical depression um, through family origin. Like, my family has anxiety. Um, and so, basically, I was put on antidepressants and anti-anxiety medication. Um, I'm not going to say which ones because that's just personal to me, but I was on anti-anxiety medication. Um, I tried it at thir 12 and I lasted three days. Um, and then I didn't do anything until I was 18 and I was able just to go through my primary care and we switched medications twice. And then after my primary care couldn't really help me anymore then we went to my pain management specialist who does my baclofen pump who also took on the role of prescribing my psychiatric medication um, because that can also help with pain and spasms and stuff like that there you can be used for different things um now this is back in january today is May 28th, 2019, so January, February, February, March, March to April, April to May, about, um, one, two, three, four, about four months ago, five months ago, this happened to me, um, and I'm just now ready to talk about it, um, because it, I had to go through a period of accepting it, and so did my family, and so did everyone, and I feel like I was hesitant to post this because or I'm hesitant to film it and talk about it and post it because I don't like the stigma and the judgment attached to it. 
but I feel like it would be the same thing as if like my best friend uh Cassidy from Chronically Cassidy had a seizure and she made a video talking about her experience at the hospital with a seizure like I feel like it's the same thing and I feel like mental illness should be treated as an illness and it should be the same thing um so that's what I'm gonna treat it as and I hope you do the same thing too um but basically I was brought in the week of January um 23rd um because I was diagnosed with bipolar one disorder on January 23rd um and let me just give you a little bit of a backstory my grandmother um, went into hospice in the beginning of just the end of November, beginning of December 2018. And the week, the weekend I had my downfall and my manic episode was a really rough weekend. I hadn't slept in three days. I basically stayed up all night because my brain just couldn't fall asleep and I started taking melatonin and I still couldn't fall asleep. I was up at four o'clock in the morning. Um, there was a really bad snowstorm and a really big like red blood moon and we didn't know that those two could be connected and like cause issues but apparently they are and like I at one point had woken up, gotten in my big power wheelchair that you guys see, had let my dog out to go to the bathroom, let her back inside because I was awake, so she was awake obviously, had let her back inside to go to the bathroom, went to the freezer, gotten a Kong out of the freezer, gave it to her and, and tried to go back to sleep. And nobody heard me, nobody in my house heard me, didn't remember what happened the next morning. So it's like I was drunk basically and I didn't know what was happening. Um, I was tweeting things on Twitter. I don't have Twitter anymore, so you can't go back and look at these tweets. And even if I did, they'd probably be deleted. Um, I was tweeting to my crush on Twitter. Um, I was like exposing my feelings for him. Um, I was tweeting to old high school friends, like, I miss you, like, let's hang out, blah, 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 two, two o'clock, two, three o'clock in the morning, literally so weird, so stupid, so dumb, you know, I was posting on Instagram, I was getting really mad, I was calling out people, um, I called out my former friend Danica for not spending time with her grandmother when she could have, again, that's not my business, but, like, I felt like I needed to say something because I was losing my grandmother and I still am losing my grandmother so I felt like I needed to call people out who I knew grandmothers were like better in health than my grandmother and they weren't spending time with them um and I called out Logan and I called her a faith manipulator um because of the things that she said to me about my faith um and now I'm not here to push faith on anyone but I think that that's really rude and that's really just uncalled for that you call your best friends of seven years faith weird I just don't think that's very fair at all um and I believe I ended up falling asleep on the floor with my hand like this in Hope's dog crate at three o'clock in the morning. Um, I was listening to a lot of Hamilton. I was watching a lot of YouTube at 3 a.m. Like, and my friend Cassidy was like, why are you awake? Like, you're not normally awake at 3 a.m. Cause like, we were actually texting and stuff. And like, nobody knew like why I was awake. Like, nobody could understand. And then I believe the tipping point was, was I started posting erratically on Instagram, like I was calling people out. I was bringing up old posts from the past and I was saying like, yup and exactly and just like not making any sense. And I kept saying exactly and I kept snapping my fingers and I kept saying the word praise break and I kept hitting myself like in the face like this and I just kept doing that and like for hours and hours and hours. 
And I guess that I took on the persona of my grandmother who has vascular dementia. We all know this already. Like, I've done countless videos on this. Um, and my mom, I don't know if she thought that I was going to hurt myself or cut myself or whatever, but she was just really, really concerned that something was happening. We thought it was my baclofen pump because... When baclofen doesn't get to your system or when it does too much, uh, things can happen and stuff like that. So we didn't know what the hell was happening. So my mom called my pump guy and explained everything with the postings and the social media and, and the erratic behavior and the, and the not sleeping and the whatever. And you, you guys didn't know this because I was either posting pre-recorded videos at this point or I think that I was not allowed to film because my mom took my phone because of social media yeah, behavior. So you guys had no idea because my mom had took my phone and kept it hostage for me. Um, and my friends were texting me to see if I was okay because I, apparently I was sending erratic text messages too and like nobody knew what was going on. I mean, some of them could probably guess what was going on, but like nobody knew. And so my mom had called my doctor and explained the situation, explained that I was like hypersensitive to noise and to light and to everything. And he said, yeah, take her to the ER, like take her to Connecticut Children's Medical Center. They'll be nicer to her there because again, mental illness is stigmatized and one of the hospitals around here is a lot nicer than the other one and because of her other complex medical history I want her to go somewhere that they'll look at everything so I believe it was around I hadn't slept at all at all my mom was in my room because she wanted to see like what was happening I did not sleep at all from like midnight to like 4 a.m. I was awake Try, I was trying to fall back asleep like I wasn't like up on my phone texting hey Judy Smith like I wasn't doing that I was literally trying to fall back asleep I was so tired um so I believe whatever day I think it was a Tuesday that I had went into the um ER like the week of January the last week the no 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 the last week of January I believe I went to the hospital um, and I believe it was like 7.30 or 8 o'clock in the morning by the time we got there. And I, I was not coherent. I was, no, I was in no way to advocate for myself or explain what was happening. Um, I was just yelling. I was yelling things. I was pretending like I was in high school and I was asking for my high school friends. I was asking for this boy that I, uh, I had a crush on and we'll get into more of him later because I was like hallucinating and I was thinking that he was going to come visit me with hope because he um, did drugs back when we were in high school. He did like weed and stuff, but he was always very, 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 very nice to me and very, 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 very helpful. Um, so I always thought that he was going to come help me because, um, <clears throat> it turns out that every time that I had something hard that I was going through, I would always just imagine that he would come help me, right? So, just, oh, so, so embarrassing. And I can, I can laugh about it now, but I can tell you that I wasn't laughing. I was crying. I thought it was so serious, like, and I was just ye yelling 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 about social media and i was just saying like well when i told you my grandmother had dementia you, you didn't understand and it forced me to block you like i was black i was just blocking people left and right for just like no reason other than the fact that i was just really really angry really angry and i just wanted control over something and i had no control over anything and i think a lot of that came from the fact that she was in hospice and I had no control over anything that was happening with that. I just had to let her go. I was, I'm trying to let her go now, like slowly, trying to grieve her twice, you know, grieving the person that I once knew and grieving her again when she does pass away. That's what we're talking about in therapy and that's what we talk about weekly for a few minutes anyway. And... So 
they had no idea what was going on. They tested me for all these street drugs because they didn't know if I took something because, like, I'm 22. Like, they didn't know if I tried to, like, hurt myself or anything. Like, so I basically had a sitter through my entire stay and the sitter just made sure that I didn't hurt myself. I didn't hurt anyone else. I didn't hurt, you know, nurses or anything. Um, basically just like a babysitter. Um, and basically also to give my mom a break because the psychiatrist wanted to talk to her. The psychiatrist wanted to talk to me alone. Like, um, basically from the other videos that I've seen on YouTube of people's psychiatric hospital experience, the way mine differed was I didn't go to group therapy. I didn't go to a psychology session. I had everything come to me and basically everyone came to me in my room I was on a I didn't really leave my room for that week other than to go for an MRI to check to see if my back and pump was okay that's why we went to the children's hospital because they treated me they put in my back and pump they knew everything about it because again we didn't know what was happening my body was just biologically like shutting down like not shutting down but like I was just, like melting down like literally I was I was yelling I was screaming I was crying and okay so setting change I'm sorry and if you don't know what a baclofen pump is and if you don't know why I have one I have cerebral palsy but I'll link a video of my baclofen pump story down below um and if you hear squeaky toy noises it's because I'm trying to tire out my golden doodle service dog in training because it's raining today and we get no outside time. Come here, Hope. She's playing with one of her Bark Box toys. She got a Bark Box for Mother's Day and her gotcha day. Anyway, so I believe I got to the ER um, about 7.30, 8 a.m. on Tuesday morning because or maybe 9 or 10 because my dad had already left for work, but he came back home because he wanted to come with me, and now, as you may or may not know, me and my dad don't always see eye to eye, but, like, I think that he was trying to be there for me in his own way, but I was pushing him out, and I wouldn't let him, I wouldn't let him in the room with me, um, to wait or do anything, so my mom had sent him to his office, which is about three miles away from where we were. Now, they did blood work, they tested for illicit drugs because I was acting erratically and they didn't know why. Um, like, I was yelling, I was asking for things, I was crying, I, I just was so hysterical. Like, I, I had no idea at the time, but that was mania. Mania and delirium is what I was diagnosed with in the ER before I got admitted. I had no idea, um, but that's what it was. And I had, I believe it was a CAT scan and a chest x-ray and whatever, blood work, uh, straight cath for UTI because they didn't know if it was a UTI. They didn't know anything. They checked my pump like twice over like six hours. I was in the ER for like six seven hours it was ridiculous um i don't think i got admitted till 8 30 9 o'clock that night because they, they had no idea they wanted to make sure and so i was admitted and i don't think i slept that night either because they gave me um advan benadryl and melatonin and i didn't sleep at all um, my vitamin K was low, so they needed to give me fluids to rehydrate me because I hadn't had anything to eat or drink because we didn't know if I was going to need surgery for the baclofen pump. We didn't know anything because baclofen can be really tricky. Um, now looking back on it, it's completely mental, but we didn't know, like I said. So I had, like, one bite of breakfast before I left, and, like, I barely was eating those three days. Um, whatever. Anyway, it doesn't matter. But, so, I got admitted, and then I 
didn't really sleep, and then the next day I slept completely during the day. Like, my sleep and wake cycles were completely off, so they only let me take 20-minute naps, and then they complete, which, um, looking back on it now is fine, whatever, but something they did that my psychiatrist now does not agree with was they completely took me off of my antidepressants, and they put me on two new mood stabilizers for bipolar one. Um, and my psychiatrist does not agree with that. She did not agree with the medication that I was put on in the hospital, so we had to taper off of that, and then a little bit of the mania came back. I was laughing. Oh, that was the other thing. Like, I was laughing uncontrollably. I was peeing my pants uncontrollably before we went to the hospital. I went through, like, five pairs of pants, and I was just laughing uncontrollably at nothing. I would just be cackling, laughing, so stupid. Nothing at nothing. And so, and once they realized it was mania, they were able to get me on to the right medication. And then, like I said, I didn't go to group therapy or anything. Everything came to me. And my... I didn't really leave the room that week. I wasn't really allowed to. Um, and the other funny thing, well, not funny, but the other interesting thing about it was that, um, I, um, I, like, couldn't, what's the word? I couldn't have regular silverware, so all my silverware and dishes had to be plastic or throwaway. Um, I couldn't have, like, normal things, because I don't think that I was on Suicide Watch, because I wasn't suicidal, but I think that they might have thought that I could have hurt myself, so they took away my call button, I didn't have a call button, um, which was good, because I kept pressing it and saying that I needed help, and they knew that, they knew that, so they were coming, but, like, they took away the call bell, and I was like, oh, good, you should take that away, because, wires are messy, and we don't need wires, and da-da-da-da-da, and, like, I was just, I was out of my mind, right, and it was two or three days in, maybe four, before I started to really calm down, even though that wasn't the right medication for me, and that's not the medication that I'm on currently, um, I'm on a medication that you hear a lot for bipolar, it's on TV all the time, um, but I'm not just gonna mention it, because I don't feel comfortable doing that, like, you could do your own research, like, you know, this was not a research study video. Um, but it was four or five days before I really started to calm down. And it was, let me tell you, it was the scariest thing I've ever been through in my entire life. Um, because I didn't have control over my body. I had no control over my mind. I had no control over what came out of my mouth. So I was yelling at people. Like, literally all the feelings that I've probably ever kept silent were coming out of my mouth, my body, my everything. Um, so now we go back to the boy who I had a crush on in high school and who I still have a crush on. So if you see this, hey, how you doing? Hope you hit me up. You know, I'm doing good now. I'm on a better path. Um, it was funny because... His sister was actually my liaison, my patient liaison. Everybody has a patient liaison at the hospital that I go to. And not that I want to sound rude or anything, but his mom was my cleaning lady. His mom was on, like, the cleaning staff. And they were like, oh, my God, so do you know this boy? Like, is it a real boy or is she, like, hallucinating? Because the other thing I was hallucinating about is I was hallucinating that we were married and that this lady was but my mother-in-law, right? So fucking embarrassing. So embarrassing. She was so good about it though. She was so nice to me. I mean, they they all they all were very nice to me, but it was so 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 embarrassing. And I kept saying, "I want my boy and my dog and I want my boy and my dog and my boy and my dog." And they were like, "Who's your boy?" And I'm like, "Her son." And I was so embarrassing, and, um, 
one day there was uh, chocolate chip cookies on the side of my lunch tray, right? And I had ordered cookies for dinner and lunch, right? And I saved them because I'm like, I'm going to have cookies with my boy and my dog because back in high school, he oh, he was in the culinary program at my high school. And they made the best homemade freaking chocolate chip, chocolate chip cookies, like your grandma's recipe, like anything you would ever imagine. It was so, 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 so good. And... Hopi, can we stop with the squeaker now? Because you got it out of the toy. Can we stop now? Um, she wants to kill the squeaker, that's why. But, um, anyway. So, <clears throat> and I kept begging begging for my dog because I, I kept quoting the ADA laws, how they couldn't go in the operating room, but they were allowed in your room. And I was like, because she's a service dog in training, you know? And they actually had a therapy dog come and visit me that was a Great Dane, and he had a prong collar on. And I was like, hey, why is he wearing a prong collar? And she was like, so I can keep him in line and know that he has to behave a certain way. And I was like, exactly, my dog has one of those too. And it was just the whole thing. I was teaching them about service dogs. I was like, I want my service dog here. And my mom's like, your service dog is not visiting you. Well, you'll see her when you go home. Like, that'll be the first thing that you do. Because they were like, oh, does your dog sleep on your bed with you? And I said, yeah. Come here, Hope. Come here. And I said, and I said, yeah, she does. Every night. And, like, right on my feet, really. And... And I said, yeah, she does. And um, so basically what I wanted to say was, is that when you go to a hospital for psychiatric reasons, they don't really do much in the way of getting to the root of the issue. I mean, they may find out why you're hallucinating and, oh, I know, I was taking on the persona of my grand, my, uh, my grandmother who has dementia and I was like, you need to help my granddaughter. Like, she's really sick. Like, I literally was talking about myself in the third person and everything. It was ridiculous. It was so scary. And I was like, I have dementia. You have to help me. Like, they were like, no, you don't have dementia. You're so young. Like, you're only 21 at the time. And whatever, and, um, and so they don't really, and at least in my experience, they don't really get to the root of the issue, that's what therapy is more for, they basically just stabilize you, take you off of medications that aren't working, find out what medications do work for you, even though they wouldn't listen to me and my DNA test said that another medication would work better, they wouldn't listen to me because I don't know why, they wouldn't listen to my family either. And, um, so I was in there for a whole week. Oh, hi, Hope. Say hi to the people. Mm. I was in there for a whole week, seven days, and I had an MRI. I had a head CT scan. I had all these different scans because, like, they didn't know. Um, everything with my pump turned out fine, so it was good to check the pump anyway. Um, my neurosurgeon came to visit me, check the pump, um, actually give me a higher dose because when I was manic, I was super, super tight and my muscles were very, very contract. And I think she's like, are you alerting? You're not alerting. You're not alerting. You don't know how to alert yet, but you're just, you're just here because this is a tough conversation, huh? You missed mama. You missed me. You missed Emmy. You missed me when I was in the hospital, huh? You did, but your brother came to visit you and everything. Um, but yeah, I just, it was a very tough thing. And bas basically what they did for me was they stabilized me and they gave me orders to go to a patient group therapy thing. But then the patient group therapy thing, um, turned me away basically because I wasn't allowed to have um, help in the bathroom. They thought that it would be setting me up for failure 
if they did that. So basically, they turned me away because of my CP, and then it took me another two weeks to find the therapist that I'm currently with, um, and she's great. She's actually a social worker, not a therapist, a social worker, and then I have a great psychologist, and I ended up switching meds about two or three times before I was completely stable. Like, it, looking at me now, you wouldn't even know that I have bipolar or anything, so that's the way I like to keep it because... Even though I'm making this video right now and I'm putting myself out there, I almost feel already judged and I'm nervous about making this video. But yeah, th so that's the story about the time I went to the psych ward back in January. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.